morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, our webinar um, this afternoon here in Mauritius. Um, I, Carrick Property, uh, together with Carrick Investment Services, um, have been working very closely with George Ramsford and IT Globe for a number of years now. Um, we're looking now moving forward to Carrick Property, okay, to make them our key property investment provider. Um, and with that, then, we've decided sort of four to eight weeks from now to start a series of webinars, okay, with regards to the opportunity that our clients can find in diversifying their property, uh, sorry, their portfolio and taking a look at property in addition to it. Um, but with, of course, what we've seen now um, over the last four to eight weeks, what we've seen over the last two weeks with regards to the increased volatility in the equity market, okay, we've seen a massive sell over 17 days, nearly 30%. Okay, historically we haven't seen as sharp a sell-off okay, in the equity market history. Um, I've been receiving a number of calls, a number of emails from existing clients um, and colleagues, from people I've spoken to over the years, both here in Mauritius, internationally, in South Africa and throughout Asia, okay, that were asking three fundamental questions, Mark. Okay, with equity markets where they are, um, with interest rates falling further, um, where can I want? Okay. Where can I put my money to preserve and protect it? Um, number two, um, is there opportunity still to grow my savings, to grow my wealth? Yeah. To see appreciation in my investments over this short to medium term period. And number three, for those individuals that are drawing down income at the moment, that are retired or maybe one, two, three years away from retirement, okay, the question time and time again is, Mark, okay, where can I find yield? How can I generate income at this time, okay, so I can sustain my lifestyle? Uh, now, with all those questions coming in as they have, I reached out to George and I suggested that maybe we should bring the initial, okay, webinar forward and maybe we should concentrate on where we are today, the market conditions we're facing, okay, the issues that we're facing surrounding the coronavirus, um, and determine then as to find ourselves in a position where maybe we can impart information in order to help our clients make informed decisions moving forward, where we are uh, and help them to look at alternative asset classes to your fixed income asset classes, to your equity based portfolio, and okay, you start looking at property. Okay, property in itself has helped my clients preserve, protect their wealth, okay, and to force them appreciation, okay, and to develop good income streams where required. And for that reason, I thought it was prevalent uh, to afford an opportunity individuals to join us here today okay to take a look at one the markets and two what opportunities there may be in order to do those three things um so i welcome george here again <laughs> this afternoon here today okay to present um on those areas of concern that i know all of us have at the moment to take a look at then at property uh, as an alternative asset plan as an opportunity to help diversify uh, your portfolio internationally okay answer any questions that you may have uh, we will run a Q&A at the end, okay, but please do during the course of this webinar, during the course of this presentation, you'll see a little box data, type your questions, if you did so, okay, you'll refer to those at the Q&A session at the end with any other questions that may come. Okay, do take advantage of this opportunity. Um, he is an expert in his field, okay, I go to him time and time and time again, okay, with regards to, okay, his sector where he concentrates, okay, the forms of knowledge, please take advantage of this opportunity. Um, and uh, with that, then I pass you over to George. Okay, and you can start this presentation. Thanks very much. Enjoy. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, a big welcome to everyone. Uh, sorry about the, the slight delay there. Um, I'd firstly like to say thank you very much to Carrick Property for inviting me to present uh, on this webinar to everyone. Um, it's probably quite timely for a webinar, seeing as a, a lot of us, uh, if you're in the same situation as myself in the UK, are working from home currently with the, the global lockdown that we are experiencing. So yes, big thank you to all of you for attending and a big thank you to, to Carrick Property for organising. So uh, the topic we're covering today, coronavirus, is now a good time to invest in property. Um, there's obviously quite a few parts to that question, uh, which I will endeavour to answer over the next 25, 30 minutes. Um, uh, just a brief introduction to myself. Uh, my name is George Radford. I run the IP Global business in, in Africa and also in the UK. Um, my, my background is on a chartered surveyor, over 15 years of property investment experience, 
worked in the UK um, five years post qualification, four years in Asia in Hong Kong uh, and China, uh, and then five years in Africa. So what are we going to cover today? Uh, coronavirus and the impact on the global economy, the importance of diversification within your portfolio. Uh, is now a good time to invest in property? The, the million dollar question. An introduction to IP Global. I'm uh, mindful that maybe not everyone is, is familiar with our offering, so uh, a quick introduction to the company. I'll have a look at the global real estate outlook, where we're currently investing and where's hot and where's not. Um, how to get an international mortgage. Very common question that our clients ask us, especially those clients based within the, the Africa region. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll touch upon that. And then we'll, we'll focus in on a Berlin investment case study, uh, seeing as we have today just launched our new Berlin investment. And then at the end, we'll do a QA. and a So coronavirus, firstly, I hope that everyone on, on this call is safe and uh, you and your families are doing well. It's a tragic uh, pandemic that is slowly but surely taking over the world. Um, and where quite it will end, I don't think any of us really know. Um, but what we do know is it started off in, in Asia, uh, in China, uh, spread across the Middle East and Europe, uh, and now is, is growing aggressively within Europe in particular and the United States, uh, which has really led to uh, most governments shutting their borders or in the process of doing so. Um, what this map shows is that it has recovered well in, in Asia, uh, especially in China, um, and you know, slowly but surely we will see the peak of the, the pandemic. Uh, hopefully, especially within Western economies, uh, and then uh, a steady recovery from there. So the timing was uh, very bad, really. For the uh, not that there's ever a good time for a pandemic, obviously, but it's, a, it's been a, a double a hit for the global economy and also for investors because, coupled with the coronavirus, we we had the situation with Saudi Arabia and Russia uh, dispute over um, oil prices and really defying the, uh, the rules of engagement of OPEC, um, which has led, led to oil prices being decimated and uh, financial markets around the world obviously reacting negatively to that and, and the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So what is the impact going to be on the global economy? Um, again, very difficult to say uh, accurately because uncharted waters. Um, but what we, we have seen in the last two weeks in particular is the financial markets being annihilated, capital markets and all the major stock exchanges around the world correcting uh, massively. The, the worst is yet to come in my view in terms of the, the pain for the global economy because of supply chains, namely, as you know, the supply chains become strangled around the world and supplies are cut off because of the movement of people uh, being restricted. Um, then we are going to see um, some very big challenges for the global economy in, in the short term. This has had a, a very big impact on the governments and the central banks and their policies. I'm very pleased to say that the, uh, the central banks and the government have reacted very positively, it's been proactive. We've seen the US, European countries, Germany, France, Spain, allocating hundreds of billions of dollars, euros, to address the uh, the pandemic, the UK government's committed 330 billion pounds uh, to support businesses and individuals, um, which I think will go a long way to instilling confidence in people and, uh, and making them behave responsibly. So that's where the impact has been, namely on those those areas. But it's resulting in inevitably a global recession. Um, it's not as bad, and it's very different what we saw in 2007 and 2008, a very different type of recession. In my view, it's not a financial crisis. As such, the banks are better capitalized uh, and they're, they're better set up now in order to, to offer support that is needed very much by businesses and individuals um, as they feel the pain of the pandemic. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are, however, in uncharted waters. and We really don't know the full ramifications of the coronavirus. Um, but what we, we do uh, generally uh, agree on, uh, most of us anyway, is that it should be relatively short-lived. Um, and I do pose the question, is, is this the end of globalisation? And in my view, you know, the silver linings of this pandemic 
um, could be that it makes us realize that we, we we do depend on each other globally and you know globalization is is crucial to everything we do really and uh, global economies are so interlinked and then secondly I, I think it will help make us all reflect a bit more on on what we do in the world do we do we need to get on an airplane to go to that meeting you know it will reduce our carbon footprint make us realize that we we can work a bit more from home um or remotely um, and I, I think personally that's a good thing because i'm the first one to be traveling around and, and meeting clients and absolutely that won't end but i, I do think there's a, a silver lining in that cloud um uh, it, with that regard okay so the, the importance of diversification we can see there that the the oil the oil crude oil and the US stocks were the two best performing asset classes in the US market. I'm really going to focus this on, on the US market um, because uh, there's the most data available typically um, and it's the biggest economy in the world. So if we those two assets did very, very well in 2019. However, as we all know, that's changed very quickly. And uh, and therein, if you had all of your assets allocated to, to equities, especially if they weren't managed properly, and um, then would have lost a lot of money in the last two weeks um, and probably had a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, we can see that most of the major exchanges around the world, especially in Europe, um, most of the Asian ones and, and, and the North American ones um, are down by 30% plus, which is really uh, unprecedented in, in recent times. So why is diversification important? Um, the previous slides did show, uh, the hopefully did show why it's important. But this, if you look at the, the asset class performance in the US again, just so it's consistent. Um, you can see if you had all your assets in, in one particular type of asset, then again, you, you'd have a pretty bumpy ride. Uh, the, this, this is a bit favorable actually to the US stocks. They've had a good run. To take this back over the last 20 years then it's not quite as favorable for us stocks but you know let's hedge well let's diversify get a mixture of different assets in your portfolio um, and then you protect yourself very well so okay is, is now a good time to invest in property i think the best way i can answer this question is to look at the benefits of, of international real estate because that all links in really to, to the question itself. So we invest in property primarily for long-term wealth generation. It's a fantastic tool to generate wealth for ourselves and for our, our beneficiaries, for our children. Um, so if we take a, a medium to long-term view here and not a short-term focus view, then you know, the future still looks very bright for, for property. Uh, in these times of uncertainty, as in all times of uncertainty, Generally, investors will, um, they will they will hurry towards fixed assets. So property is obviously tangible and it's a very stable asset. And I think we'll see a lot more interest we have already in property as an asset class as those capital flows come out of the equity markets. It's great for property. The central banks are going to be paralyzed and interest rates will have to remain low uh, for the foreseeable. And that's brilliant for borrowing cheap finance from the bank to leverage your property investment. Also, a great facet of property is its uh, rental income, uh, anti-inflationary, and also there's tax benefits therein um, from, from the rental income. So again, in times of uncertainty, when people are looking for yield, I, I think that's a massive uh, facet. Currency exposure, again, you know, we can use property as a tool to get different currency exposure. Great buying opportunity for sterling right now, obviously. Um, and again, get further diversification within your portfolio. And, you know, we should all have an element of property within your portfolio. Uh, not all of your portfolio, I wouldn't advise that because the biggest downside of property is it's liquid. That's also in times of uncertainty, it's, it's biggest strength because people can't panic sell. That means that the volatility is not there. So even in these times of volatility, there, there will be good buying opportunities. If I cast my mind back, to when we first entered the London market in 2009 after the last, last financial crisis, then those are some of the most successful investments we ever made for our clients. Okay, so IP Global. 
let's just give a quick introduction to the business. So I've been with the company for almost 10 years. We've been going for 15 years in total. We've got 15 offices around the world. We're headquartered in Hong Kong. And our modus operandi is to work with individual clients around the world and help them to invest in direct residential property in the same way they can any other asset class. Obviously, it's never going to be quite that simple. There are some um, different uh, processes associated with purchasing international property and managing international property. But what we're trying to do in our business model is to alleviate a lot of uh, that management required by the client. So our clients have access to direct residential property in tier one markets around the world in a very easy, uh, seamless way. And we will manage that process for them from start to finish. So we, we've had a very good 15 years, we've invested over $3 billion globally into 30 different markets now. Um, and I'll come on to those a bit more in a second. But in, in terms of our business model, it's all about going into the market, doing the research and the due diligence, identifying pockets of value, pockets of growth, buying in bulk from developers, creating a value proposition for ourselves and our clients, and then managing those assets, dealing with the lawyers, dealing with the, the handover at completion, securing the tenants, collecting rental income, and then five, 10 years later, when clients wish to resell their properties, helping to liquidate the assets as well. Um, these are uh, direct fi fixed assets. Clients own the properties in their own name or in the company name, but you fully own the title deeds. Um, it's not a syndication or a fund or anything like that. Uh, we do also have in-house uh, mortgage bond origination services, which I'll elaborate on a bit further in the presentation. So in terms of our business model, some key pillars really, the research and the due diligence, that, that to me is the most important thing that we do, uh, making sure that when clients buy property, it's done properly, it's good value, good growth, and it's done effectively and efficiently. We have an investment team that undertake that whole process on behalf of our clients. Once we've identified a good market and a good asset within that market, we will then buy in bulk from a developer, forward purchase, um, maybe 50% of the project um, and get preferential terms on that purchase. So early access to clients and then preferential terms on, on, on the, the purchase itself. And then at the back end, you know, we'll, we'll manage the process from start to finish. As I mentioned earlier on. So from the point of identifying the asset to the point at which the client resells in five, 10 years time, we'll be with you every step of the way. Just delving a bit deeper into the research and the due diligence, absolutely crucial to, to any investment, regardless of its property or, or equities um, or whatever it may be, you need to do your, your due diligence and your research. And those are some of the things that we look at mac micro, macro uh, levels and just make sure that anything we do, it's safe. Uh, there's good liquidity, good financing available, sound legal structure, a you know, reasonably friendly tax environment to facilitate not inhibit investment. And we'll dig deeper into demographic trends. Are our populations growing? Or are they contracting? Um, you know, what's the disposable income per capita? How does that relate to the price per square foot, per square meter of properties in the cities that we're investing in? Does that impact affordability, so on and so forth. So we've been very busy. We've done a lot of investment historically um, in, in the US. We entered that market back in 2011, a lot in New York, uh, San Francisco and Chicago primarily. Um, pulled out about 2013, um, just because we saw, you know, a yield compression, financing was challenging and, um, and the asset values were getting quite high. Australia, uh, we were very busy in Melbourne and Brisbane. Germany, which I'll focus on later in the presentation, we've been very busy in Berlin. And the UK uh, has been our number one market, you know, billions of, of dollars of investment into that market over the last 15 years. Okay, so now just have a quick look at our global real estate outlook. Um, this is our house view on global property markets and uh, where we see good opportunities currently and uh, over the course of 2020. Excuse me. So you can see on that map, we're very European focused. Um, we, we've been very busy in the UK. London, I, I still think it's a great city. Uh, there'll be good buying opportunities now, especially with Sterling being so weak. And then the regional key UK cities, 
Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds and, and Birmingham. So outside of that, we've been very busy in Germany, uh, Berlin, which I'll come on to later, but also Leipzig, a fantastic market, uh, which is probably five, 10 years behind the growth of Berlin uh, and been identified as one of the key growth cities uh, within, within Germany and also within Europe. I was in both Berlin and Leipzig, Porto and Lisbon uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I was just blown away by what's happening in all of those uh, cities and, and the opportunity that exists there for our clients. Um, so that takes me nicely on to our third market, which is Portugal. And as I mentioned, we've, we've got a number of investments running in, in both Lisbon and Porto, uh, which I'll come on to a bit later in the presentation. We are looking at some other markets. You can see there in the turquoise, um, you know, a few other cities within Germany, Frankfurt and Dusseldorf, uh, other cities within the UK, such as Edinburgh, Sheffield and Glasgow, where we see great opportunities. Um, and uh, this will continue to change and we'll keep all global markets under review uh, as, as things progress over the course of 2020 and we'll invest where we see a good opportunity. So on to the UK now. So I, I still, uh, not because I'm British and currently based in the UK, uh, believe the UK to be a very strong economy and a great property market. You know, the facts speak for themselves. Still fifth largest economy in the world. Um, it's consistently voted number one out of G7 economies in terms of ease of doing business, um, regardless of Brexit and, and leaving the EU. Um, the economy uh, did remain very strong and has remained strong um, during the, the, the Brexit transitional process um, and uncertainty that surrounded it. UK house prices continue to grow in 2019, up by around 2.2% across the country as a whole. And we're expecting over 10% growth uh, across the UK over the next two to three years. The rental market continues to be uh, strong within the UK. Cost of finance is, is low uh, and it will continue to remain low and may even get lower as the Bank of England adjusts its base rates to stimulate the economy. There's some huge infrastructure improvements, something we always look at in cities because that fuels growth, uh, commerce um, and We've seen with the likes of Crossrail, the impact that's had, and the next step will be HS2 linking London to Birmingham, and thereafter, you know, London to the northern cities, Manchester, Liverpool, and the like, um, which will be fantastic for those regional economies and great for the property markets therein. Um, greater buying power now, but there's a, a window of opportunity with sterling being so weak. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest from clients over the last few days uh, taking advantage of that. Um, I also see a addition to that a window of opportunity with the proposed uh, stamp duty tax changes that are going to take place in April 2021, which will mean that any foreign buyers purchasing UK investment property will pay an extra 2% stamp duty above and beyond what it really is. So again, a good opportunity over 2020 to, to save some money on your, your purchasing cost. And uh, London has been identified as the number four city in Europe overall for property investment prospects for 2020 by PwC. So moving on to our next city, Portugal, uh, country, sorry, Portugal, um, a, a great country, one of the oldest nations in the world, um, significant recovery from the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008, really one of the standout performers within Europe, really opened its doors to foreign direct investment. Um, Lisbon was identified as the number one city in, in Europe, for investment prospects by PwC in 2019. Um, and again, remarkably, Lisbon and Porto account for almost 75% of Portugal's GDP. And that's largely why we're focusing on those two cities, big tech hubs, big startup hubs, great universities, um, and still fantastic value within those cities. You, know, you can pick up investments from two, three, four thousand euros a square meter within the likes of Porto and seven, eight thousand plus in. Lisbon, which is still very cheap compared to other European cities. If we look at prime London, sort of 25, 30,000 uh, euros a square meter by comparison. So a great value proposition within those uh, two cities. And, and low cost of financing, we're looking at 2% uh, interest rates. And uh, there is obviously the, the golden visa and non-habitual tax residence, residency program, um, which is, is driving a lot of investment within the country. Germany, uh, probably my favoured uh, investment market globally. 
Um, the economy is very strong, continues to be very robust, uh, despite the time, some uncertain times ahead. It's the largest economy in Europe, accounts for 16% of the GDP within Europe. Uh, and we've seen consistently double digit growth over the last five years in uh, Berlin in particular, but also a lot of the other German cities, very strong rental uh, growth in that period as well. The, the, a number of reasons why I really like Germany, the purchase process is very easy and, and very seamless. And um, you appoint power of attorney to a lawyer, it saves a lot of admin for our clients, which we like, um, and it just makes the process much simpler from start to finish. The lending rates are very competitive and the accessibility of finance is, is very good um, and much easier to achieve than uh, other countries around the world that I've uh, invested in in the past. So that's a massive benefit, especially for our clients based within the Africa region. There's no restrictions on clients' nationalities or jurisdictions for lending within uh, Germany. Um, if you hold the assets for a period over 10 years, there's also tax benefits therein um, with no capital gains tax payable on property assets sold in Germany. Okay, so uh, just going to cover the international mortgage side of the uh, of the webinar. Uh, we're then going to focus on Berlin uh, and then we'll do a Q&A. So uh, we, we have in-house uh, mortgage bond, bond originators who can procure loans for our clients. Uh, we What we do is we profile all our clients um, and all Carrick clients that we work with uh, in tandem with Carrick to ensure that clients meet the financial requirements and you know, their personal circumstances allow them to access uh, international lending before they commit to an investment. We, uh, we can work with both self-employed, unemployed, permanently employed individuals. Um, typically an income threshold uh, there's no rule of thumb, but I would say typically about £50,000 uh, in terms of annual salary uh, would be a good uh, sort of ballpark figure to look at in terms of uh, where we can start presenting some, some lending options to individuals. We can help with new purchases, obviously, because that's our bread and butter and financing our clients' investments. But we do also have the ability to help clients refinance and, and do equity releases within their portfolios. Um, interest rates so the UK, uh, we're looking circa 4%. We can get less than that uh, in terms of the uh, the lending rates, but 4% there thereabouts, fixed and variable rates, interest only, and principal repayment mortgages. So uh, a range of different products within the UK. Um, the market's definitely tightened up a bit over the last couple of years for international buyers, but there are still some good options there. Germany, we're looking at circa two to three percent interest rates, fix those for 10, 15, 20 years, um, which is, is madness, but brilliant for us and, and brilliant for our clients. And then in Portugal, circa two percent. The the loan to values that we, we achieve will depend on the market, will depend on the property, and will depend on the individual. But we, we're achieving typically 50 up to a maximum, I'd say, of 70 percent loan to values for our clients buying within those aforementioned markets. Um, but just to, to clarify, any individual that we work with, we will sit down on a case by case basis and assess their ability to leverage before we start making investment recommendations. All right, then. So um, moving on to the final part of the presentation, a Berlin case study. Um, one of my favourite cities in the world, very young, very trendy. Um, as I mentioned, I was there two or three weeks ago. Um, I'm pleased to say this, this report here uh, shows the top German cities in terms of investment prospects and we're focusing our efforts in the right locations, Berlin and Leipzig identified as number one and number two. So why do I like Berlin uh, other than it being a, a great place to visit, a very young and trendy city? Um, uh, various reasons really, you know, we, we can't forget it's the political capital of the biggest economy in Europe, the fourth biggest economy in the world. It's the third most visited city within Europe um, and uh, one of the most popular cities within Europe. Fantastic student population there, 185,000, 190,000 students within Berlin itself. Um, booming population, pushing on 4 million, uh, and that continues to grow. Uh, PwC have identified it as the number two city within Europe for investment prospects. And 
it's absolutely booming in terms of startup. So 67% of the startups within Germany take place within Berlin, which is a really staggering fact. Um, and it always blows my mind every time I, I reflect on that. That's quite an accolade for the city. And um, in, in addition to that, I mentioned previously, uh, there's various benefits from ease of purchase, leveraging tax benefits from buying within Germany and more specifically within, within Berlin. So where, where have we been investing in, in, in Berlin? My mouse should hopefully work. Um, so you can see these are all our projects historically over the last five years within, within Berlin. Um, 14 projects in total. The new project I'm going to show you now is, is located in Mitte, bang in the heart of Mitte, the most central uh, Berlin investment we've ever done. Um, but we've done a lot over in Charlottenburg over the last four or five years, um, delivered some great investments there for our clients. Uh, also New Colm, I'm going to focus on, on Coda just in a second and show you a bit more about that project. Um, also the galleries up to the fringes of Mitte and Lichtenberg. Um, I'm going to show you a bit more information on that investment. And then pushing out to the east of the city, uh, we've done a handful of different projects around there as well. So going back to the, what I mentioned previously on that last map, the, the, the property to the north of the city, the fringe of Lichtenberg, uh, the galleries, we did seven units in there back in May 2017. Um, you know, lovely development, boutique, uh, studios and one bed units. We got clients in there around 5,000 euros a square meter. And uh, the most recent valuations that we just had done uh, indicate we're pushing on 8,000 euros a square meter in terms of values, which represents you know, pushing on a 50% uh, increase in the property values for our clients. Okay, so our new development, which I'm very proud to, to launch today, it, it's just launched this morning uh, to, to our, our global clients, um, is the Ambassador. So located bang in the heart of Mitter, a fantastic landmark development. You can see from this map here, um, this is our development. The Ambassador, it's the building on the left, new build property. And we are really in amongst all the embassies. You can see Alexander Platz there on the map. That is the massive retail shopping centre uh, in the heart of Berlin. And in very, very close proximity to all the amenities, shopping, transport, uh, business, um, employment nodes, so on and so forth. So really delighted to bring you this project today. It's been 12 months in the making. Um, and uh, you know we're, we're very chuffed to bring it on board and working so with, with Carrick and Carrick clients uh, to offer such a great opportunity. You, you can see uh, the, the project is appropriately named the Ambassador uh, because where that orange marker is, is, is where the property is located. And if you look on this map here, and please do take a closer look when we circulate the slides and the actual formal uh, investment presentation. Um, but we are literally in the heart of embassy land. And, um, you know, that, that's going to be fantastic for tenants, be fantastic for resale. Uh, we're very close to the media spree up here, which is the new uh, media centre, a bit like, you know, Salford Keys, uh, Media City up in Manchester, similar sort of uh, comparison there, um, and very close to all the transport links. So you don't really get a better location than this within Berlin. Um, so the project itself, landmark development, over 11 floors, uh, 77 units in total. There's a supermarket, uh, a cafe and a bakery on the, on the ground floor, which is brilliant for tenants, very appealing for buyers when you try and resell these units. There's a communal garden, which you can see there on the first floor. Um, it, uh, it's designed um, to be a recreational area, but also uh, there's going to be an outdoor gym there, which again is brilliant for millennials renting these studio apartments. Um, because all they want is a plug and play location close to the city centre, very well connected, um, you know, a place to do their, a little bit of cooking, wash their clothes, lay their head, and the rest of the time they're out and about within the city. A lot of these millennials have been priced out, key employment nodes within major cities around the world, 
And what we're presenting here is a new um, fast growing phenomenon in global cities, micro apartments. Uh, a micro apartment is an apartment size between 20 to 35 square meters. And it, again, it really buys into that millennial story, the habits of millennials, their different living standards, and uh, and you know them being priced out of market, but also needing to be close to the business nodes and employment nodes within the city centers. And that's what this uh, development offers to, to those tenants. Um, the ex is an excellent developer, uh, Adam Europe Real Estate Investment. They're not just a German developer, they've got developments across the whole of Europe, uh, over 100 years old, and um, this is our second project with them. So really delighted to, to work with them again. We know they're a good outfit, they deliver a quality product, and uh, our clients would do very well from buying in here. The completion is uh, in Q2 2022, um, so uh, about two years off plan from, from today. And uh, going back to what I said at the start of, of presenting the project, you know, we're delighted that we've been able to secure Carrot clients an exclusive allocation of 14 units across the fifth and the sixth floor. Uh, the prices start at 245,000 euros. Um, we've put a 5% rental guarantee on this development uh, for uh, for Carrick exclusively uh, for a period of two years. So only Carrick clients globally can have access to that rental guarantee on this property. We've eliminated mortgage risk as well, which you can have on off-plan projects by getting pre-approval from the lender on every single unit within the development. And we've got 60% uh, mortgages approved on all 14 of Carrick's units. The, the minimum investment requirement that clients would, would require to access this type of product is about 120,000 euros on your entry level unit at 245,000 euros. Reason being the payment terms are upfront cost, uh, you know, within the next four weeks, which would be about 9%, 30% deposit in September, and then a further 10% deposit, probably early part of 2021, and then the balance will be covered by the mortgage. So over the next 12 months, clients will be there 40% plus their cost in, and then the mortgage will cover the balance. Um, and we're looking at estimated return on equity, so the minimum returns of about 12%, 10% sorry, per annum on, on this particular project. We, obviously we need to represent value, and what we're showing here is the ambassador compared to a lot of other properties around the area, um, represents excellent value. You can see the glint as an example, where clients are paying over 14,000 euros a square meter, which is just around the corner. So, you know, let's conclude with, is now a good time to be, to be buying property? Let's go back to the original question. So uh, in my view, obviously it does depend. You need to make sure whenever you're buying any investment, especially property, that it's done properly. Um, and, you know, and it, that you work with a partner that can deliver right product and the right advice at the right point in time. So provided that is done, um, then in my view, coronavirus will create short-term volatility, but it'll also create investment opportunity. It will naturally be a great buying opportunity for some good value, stocks and shares uh, further down the line when the markets bottom out and various other asset classes have been devalued. Um, but we can't ignore the fact that in the short term in particular, there's going to be huge capital flows out of equity markets, investors are chasing stability, fixed assets, and that's what we offer with property investment. The central banks are paralyzed. They really can't do anything in the short term to increase interest rates. If anything, they'll probably reduce interest rates. Again, that plays into our hands because it reduces the cost of borrowing. Rental income in, in times of uncertainty is also very good passive anti-inflationary uh, uh, yielding um, return. There's a finite supply of property, so regardless of what happens in the world over the next six to 12 months, people still need places to live. Um, and if anything, the, the supply will be constrained if, you know, if we're in lockdown for a period of time. And then finally, I think we all need to look at property as a, it's a medium to long term investment and it's a fantastic tool to generate wealth. So we don't look short term, you know, we look medium to long term. And, uh, and in conclusion, I'd like to just uh, summarize from an IP Global perspective why if you are going to go out into the world and, and purchase property, why it should be done with ourselves. 
we've had a fantastic 15 years we do exceptional levels of due diligence and research to ensure the investments are safe and investments are done effectively and efficiently and we manage the process uh, in partnership with the client obviously from start to finish and package it up to make it as easy as possible for clients to access uh, residential properties and asset class we put our money into projects so our greater buying power and our commitment up front means we can access the best investments generate the best value for our clients which ordinarily other companies that work on an agency basis would not be able to achieve we create early access to that product the fantastic track record as i mentioned over 15 years and delivered some amazing returns for our clients over that period and and then in final point is that you know we, we are professionals i'm a charter surveyor and we provide professional property investment advice to clients and we recommend investments to them based on their financial circumstances um, and we will work very closely with carrick um, obviously moving forward as we have done in the past to ensure that any investments that are presented to uh, carrot clients perfectly match their criteria and suit their needs okay brilliant thank you all very much and that that brings the, the presentation to a conclusion from my side i will now um endeavor to have a look at some of the questions that have been put forward um and an answer and uh, and then mark will provide um some closing thoughts at the end so i've got a question here how long can i fix an interest rate in germany so as i mentioned in in germany you can fix interest rates for a period of 10 15 or 20 years it does depend on the market um uh, the, the development sorry um and it depends on the client but yeah typically rates from 2 to 2.9 percent fixed for a minimum period of of 10 years okay uh, i've got another question here where currently do you see the best investment opportunities within europe um so going going back to the presentation um it really depends on individuals requirements um but ultimately you know if, if I remove everything um, from the equation, I'm looking objectively on where do I see the best overall return um, in the short to medium term, then very much Germany, uh, Berlin, fantastic market. And uh, I think with the tax benefits, the ease of investing and the ease of leveraging, it makes a lot of sense. I also think Leipzig is a fantastic market for IP Global and for our clients over the coming years. Uh, because of the value proposition that, that's presented there. Um, so in answer to the question there, um, you know, Germany and, and there in Berlin and, and Leipzig. So any any other questions that people might have? What do you advise for someone who has a low annual income but would like to invest in real estate? Okay. So we, we, I like to be conservative and manage expectations. So when I'm talking about minimum income requirements uh, of being around fifty thousand pounds, I, I say that um, with a, with a caveat. We we do have mortgage products. If people are asset rich and cash poor, maybe or don't draw down a significant income, maybe they're self-employed, structured in a certain way, then we we can. Uh, find solutions for them on, on a lending side. Um, you know, we in Germany, sort of 30, 40,000 euros a year, I would say would be your minimum income, but we, we can get lending on, on, on that type of income. But we will assess it on a case by case basis. Um, I think those are all of the questions that we have received. So, um, yeah, conscious of time, i just like to say a big thank you from my side um thank you very much for making the effort thank you for Carrick for organizing and inviting me along and i'll now pass over to mark fancy to uh to leave us with his closing thoughts well thank you thank you very very much george that was very much appreciated a lot of information there to take on board the session has been recorded and we will fire it out to you okay so you can look through it again um as i said there is a lot of information there the presentation is fantastic with that and obviously comes questions 
Um, so with that in mind, um, your private wealth managers will be carriage investment services will reach out. Okay, if there is a level of interest to investigate further, okay, then I'm sure we're more than happy, I'm sure George will be more than happy to arrange okay a one-on-one -on -one meeting just to answer your questions. Understand whether this is the right time for you to one look at property, okay, and two as to whether there are solutions there that meet your requirements. And that can be done, okay, in, in, in conjunction with your private wealth management account. Yeah. Uh, for me, my takeaways from this diversification is, is, is massively key. Uh, if you take a look at uh, you know, a lot of people out there with a lot of equity exposure, why it's been seven, eight, nine, it's been ten, it's been the longest ever bull run, okay, in history. Uh, so people tended to move their money into that environment, and just kept climbing. The issue now we've got, as with always, what goes up must come down. Okay, do not panic. Okay, if you're concerned about your equity exposure at the moment, speak to your representative within Carriage Investment Services. Away from that. If, uh, if you don't have property within your portfolio, it is something that you really should look at. Okay, as part of a well diversified portfolio, you should play a part. Okay, so is it the right time for you to do it? Well, let's have that conversation. Yeah, so thank you, George. Very much appreciated. Okay, thank you, everybody, for attending. Okay, um, it's fantastic to have you here, and I hope everybody took something away from this meeting. Okay, because I most definitely have. Okay, have a fantastic uh, Friday, first Thursday, further. Okay, it's Friday, Thursday. Okay, I'm all over the place at the moment. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best moving forward. Okay, stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye.